Hey there, how are you? My name is Paul Gordon. I run The Art of Face Dancing. It's uh, an online program for video mastery for entrepreneurs and coaches. And um, I was told to explain a little bit about uh, number one, who I am, number two, what I've done in the past, and number three, what I'm currently working on. So here we go. Um, I'll try to make this quick and efficient, but at the end, because I can't resist, I'm going to inform you of some very simple tricks that enable you to improve your video skills. Because the fact is that here I am talking to you about my being a uh, trainer and coach for people to learn how to do video well, and I thought that this would be a good forum. Why not take the opportunity to introduce myself on video? Okay, good. So, first of all, where am I? I'm talking to you from the countryside of Denmark, um, one hour outside of the city of Copenhagen, which is the biggest city in the, this little country. And our summer house is a three-minute bike ride from the beach. It's wonderful, friendly, quiet, cozy little uh, town. Um, there's the details. That explains my background. So who am I? Well, I'm an American. I'm from New York, baby. Hey. And I have, uh, I have been an artist and a uh, university professor, a teacher and a coach, and uh, many other different jobs. I, um, at various times, have done many different things in my life in order to get where I am now. I was very, very small when I was growing up. Third shortest kid in school. First shortest was a midget, second was a dwarf. I know they are called little people now, but when I was little we called them midgets and dwarves. No self-respecting bully was going to pick on a midget or a dwarf when in fact they could pick on little Pauly G. So I was bullied, I was small, I was relatively defenseless, I was very, very shy and introverted. And in order to combat that stuff, I learned judo. My judo teacher, my sensei, happened to be one of the best in the entire country. We had, in our small town outside of New York City, one of the best dojos in the entire United States. And in fact, he trained many national judo champions of which I was one. He suggested at various points, in order to improve your fluidity on the mat, you should consider taking some dance classes. So I did. And I found little introverted Paul Gordon became an easy conversational magnet with the girls in the dance school. And that was very fun for me because, damn, that was the only way to meet girls for me. So, in fact, going to dance class enabled me to get out of my shell in certain ways. That one thing led to another, but I want to explain something else. My being very, very shy, I realized early on that I had two choices. I could either become a complete introvert and stay in the closet and stay in my cave and not really talk to anybody, or I could choose to go the opposite direction and I could explore being a little more extroverted and figure out whether or not that would kill me. It didn't, so I developed some ability to just kind of be loud, be funny. One of the ways that you can defend yourself uh, when you are bullied is by becoming a clown, a little bit of a clown or a humorous person, um, and um, sort of like the king's court jester of a fashion, I guess. So. I took dance class and one thing led to another and through a series of turns in my life, I ended up forming a uh, performance-based company in Binghamton, New York with two friends of mine and we, uh, it was three guys, we couldn't find three girls to join us for our first gigs so we ended up coming up with a process where we could work together. It turned into something interesting and I decided, because my parents had worked as a mom and pop shop 
when I was growing up and I was always busy helping them in the home office, that I would just take the bull by the horns and I would learn how to find us an agent when we got a gig in New York City. We got a gig, we got an agent, and I started to negotiate things and I learned how to market our company and the company turned into a full-time performance group. Um, I learned all of the different aspects of the stuff. I learned how to hire and fire agents. I learned how to hire and fire technical staff. I learned how to negotiate all the contracts. And one thing that my father always told me was when we were growing up, he learned the name of the secretary for his clients. Uh, he sold golf equipment uh, to country clubs and uh, also some of the tchotchkes for the U.S. Open and some of the other major golf tournaments in the United States. And he said, learn the names of your client's uh, wife, children, what they like to do, their secretary. If you really like them and if you really learn that stuff, they'll really appreciate that. And the value of a person and a client is so much more than the uh, the money that they can give you. And in fact, my father got return clients all the time and he taught me how to do that. So I did the same with our business. I learned to find the, you know, I, I, I spoke to uh, potential producers and I spoke to agents and I spoke to all the different people and I got to know them. And we had, a, at first, when we were starting out, I learned that um, what we had to offer as a selling point for our company was that we had 100% re-engagement. That was a unique thing. People, if they booked us, they would ask us back. So that was something that we started to say. And over time, I grew the business um, with my two friends. I was the de facto company manager. I located lost luggage. I booked all of our schedule and touring. I negotiated our contracts. I negotiated various contracts and gave them to our agent in order to let our agent bump up the price. Um, and it was always uh, above board as best as I could. Over time, we grew our company. We were very fortunate. I performed on television shows all around the world. I traveled around the world, um, performed in over 35 countries, um, have been on many, many TV shows around the world, including the David Letterman show, where we went out that evening to 20 million households, um, performed on Broadway, performed in some of the biggest venues in the world. And in 2003, I got a letter from Mark Burnett, who was the um, executive producer of David Letterman's TV show and many others. You can look him up. He's been on, uh, he's, he's the executive producer of many reality TV shows. And he said, uh, congratulations, uh, to the best of our knowledge, you have now been seen by an estimated worldwide audience of uh, 1.5 billion people. It's more now. Um, makes sense. Uh, the, uh, I, I had people contact me at various times uh, saying I was just flying back from Africa and uh, you were on, uh, you know, you, you were on the in-flight entertainment. That's just the nature of the beast when you do one of those things like what I have done. So there we are. So where am I going now? I have, uh, I have been a professional freelance performing touring artist for a long time, since 1987. I have taught since then all sorts of different things. I teach theater, I teach dance, yes, but I really don't care about that. What I'm interested in is all the stuff that falls through the cracks. So I teach how to create from scratch. And that led me to developing this thing that I do, which is face dancing. I perform from the neck up. And a lot of dancers don't know how to do that because they train their body and their body is like neck down, you know, everything here, right? But this is kind of dead. And I always knew how to animate this. So I would show up at various theaters and 
uh, we were required to offer some outreach services, teaching community members, professional artists, performers, or just the public in the area workshops. And I would teach a workshop called face dancing. Now I teach public speaking in schools. I teach uh, devising from scratch to professional and uh, pre-professional actors and performers. And I transitioned into online video mastery because here we are in this world of this stuff. So I've been doing this for about a year. My process that I use to create my own one-man shows that I travel around doing is all about performing stories that I've invented myself. You have to artistically devise a story that grabs people, brings people in, but at the same time doesn't beat them over the head with a message. You have to let them get to the message through the use of interesting ways to discuss it, interesting humorous anecdotes, various storytelling analogies, and every different method of communicating that I can bring to bear on my show. It's the same principles I use for my work for the past 30-something years that I teach people now. So, I have developed this thing called the Art of Face Dancing. This is my online video mastery program. Many years ago, I was discovering what to do when I found that there was this guy who was offering like storytelling and you know learn learn to learn to tell stories on video and his claim to fame was that he had been seen on a TEDx talk not a TED talk but a TEDx talk by 200,000 people and I thought wow your credibility is 200,000 people 1.5 billion is a, a walk in the park so I started to develop my credibility. I knew, because I've been teaching for decades now, that I could develop a solid program. With my solid program that I have now, I started to get testimonials, I started to get clients, and I know that there's a lot of different things that I don't know how to do, business-wise, in this new social media world, but, I took my badass, effective, densely productive and constructive and informative, no fluff course, and I use that to leverage what I know with other business people who need the shit that I know, and I need the shit that they know. So that's how I'm working. I'm gradually scaling up. I have many plans. I have a simple, uh, I have a simple sales ladder, a value ladder. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm uh, about to launch another course. I know who I'm speaking to, and I'm continuing to work mostly on my high-ticket offer, which is my monthly retainer. That's my one-on-one -on -one stuff, and um, I communicate with people via videos I make for them, like this, and um, audio tracks, whenever I can just do a running commentary and written stuff that I combine with, you know, PDFs and various other videos. My Facebook group, my free Facebook group, has uh, well over uh, 50 training videos. My random videos that I use to post on various other um, social media groups is also at around 50. And I have a cadre of an enormous library, you know, friends, colleagues who have posted all sorts of interesting things that I share as training information, uh, a library cache of all sorts of other PDFs and documents that I use to train people. And, um, and I have some plans. I, what am I not good at yet? I'm not good at my automation. So I'm working, I'm actually trading services with an automation expert online. And, uh, I'm trading him my ability to speak with ver, vim, vigor, zesty, moxie, to deliver energetic, powerful, impactful, honest, spoken from the heart 
improvisational content that gets the message across and gives people confidence and an understanding of their camera universe. That's what I do these days. What else do I want to tell you? I don't know. That's me in a nutshell. So, you've been very patient. I'm going to now give you a couple very straightforward, simple, informative, educational, practical, instant fixes to your video delivery because it may be true that you are not among the pantheon of great folks that are delivering impactful video. You might, sadly, be one of those boring, lackluster folks that's delivering horrible, god-awful crap that people have to grin and bear it with. And this is going to fix it for you. First of all, you do not do a selfie check. You don't look at yourself. I'm looking right into the camera. I'm looking right at you. That's what you do too. Don't bother looking at yourself. We all know how gorgeous you are, okay? You don't need to see yourself. Look right into the camera because the other person's camera universe is their entire world right then. And you, when I'm looking right at you, you see me looking right at you. I'm gonna prove it to you. Right now I'm gonna do what you probably do. I'm gonna now give myself the selfie check, okay? And you're gonna see me not looking at you. Here I am. Okay, now I'm not looking at you. Now I'm looking at myself. Ooh, yeah. Oh baby. Okay, now I'm going to turn back to you and you're going to see the magic of me directly talking to you. Ready? Three, two, one. Bam. There I am. Here you are. And here we are. Rule number two. You don't talk to a shitload of people. You talk into the camera lens and you directly address one person and one person only. That doesn't matter if I'm talking on a stage to 25,000 people, which is the biggest crowd that I've taught, performed on live, or if I'm on the Letterman show, whatever it is, you look into the camera and you don't think of everybody. It's one person and you make contact that way. So those are two simple rules, okay? The other sense of this stuff is that it's perfectly fine to take a moment and take a pause because dynamic flow as you discuss things enables you to have those pauses and it makes it real. I've been talking a litany of stuff because I made this thing dense and quick, but I still did have to think a little bit and everybody has a tell when they're thinking and it's perfectly fine. Be yourself, take a moment, those people watching you will catch up. They will have a chance to process what you've already been saying and they too will take a breather. Because if you are always high energy, it's as monotonous as being always low energy. You want to vary it and give it a little roller coaster ride. What else can I say? I don't know. That's it for now. Video is king these days. You're watching a video right now. The amount that people communicate on screen, whether it be a pandemic or just regular capacity for business, training them to set themselves apart from the herd is the special sauce that develops the client interaction and engagement that really makes a difference because it's much more fun to watch someone who is making a nice time that you can enjoy than all of that boring shit where you have to watch that thing and feign interest while you secretly swipe right or left on your phone. And if you engage people, then you have them not swiping right and left. They get jazzed about what you're doing. There we are. That's me in a nutshell. 20 minutes of video. Thanks so much for bearing with me. I hope that those few tips could be put to good use. That's it for now. See ya.